Happy Wednesday, everyone. This is Ruth Ann live streaming from Art of the City right here in Solana Beach, California. And it is an absolutely gorgeous day here in San Diego. Um, the skies are blue. We are just really enjoying the fact that we're seeing people outside walking around and things are really starting to open up. So it's been really a great time. I think we appreciate it more than we ever have since we've all been kind of tucked into our own little nest there. Um, one of the things that's been really fun is we have been starting to go through all of the artwork that we had put aside. I think some of you have seen my post. We have a 10,000 square foot warehouse space that we've housed lots of things over the last 25 years. So we've, we've got a large inventory of artwork that things that we've had for, you know, artists that we've represented that are no longer working with us, and then frames galore, and you wouldn't believe the things that we're finding. But we're going to start bringing those things up to the gallery on Friday. And for those of you who like to come and look for a little bargain, there's definitely some good ones to be had here. 25 years of accumulating um, over this great time that we've had this journey with art. So definitely come by um, noon on Friday, we'll start opening up our doors and then we're gonna start putting those things online. But be a little bit patient with us because there's quite a bit and taking photos and getting it all up um, on the actual uh, store is gonna take us a minute. So, um, but be looking for that. Today, I am so pleased to bring on a friend of mine who I met in Florida about five years ago. And what I really love about her work, well, what I really love, first of all, is that she's a woman in art. And if you've ever noticed, you go into galleries, you'll find that there's definitely more male artists in the art world than there are female artists. And that's kind of been a thing that if you look at um, history, there's fewer women than men. And I'm not sure why that is, but um, it's so refreshing to see someone who has taken their talents, brought it to the world. She is an incredible artist. Her name's Wendy Norton. I'm, I'm gonna bring her on. But one of the things I've really enjoyed seeing Wendy's work is I've seen it evolve. And she has taken, I think, you know, the layers of being a mom, um, you know, You'll hear a little bit about her history, going to school for art, and um, just melding it all together to create really some of the most beautiful, plain air kind of style works that I've ever seen. So let me see if I can get Wendy on the show here and uh, bring her into the stream. Okay, and there she is. Hi, Wendy. Hey, Ruth Ann, how are you? Good. Welcome to the show. So Thank where you. do you live again? I know you're in Florida. I'm in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, which is North Florida. It's right outside of Jacksonville, a little bit north of St. Augustine. Nice. Are you so, near the beach then? Yeah, we're really close. We're about two miles. So it's a very coastal town. It's a little, we call it like a little, a little bubble. <laughs> <almost>. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. It's, it's so... Great. Tell me a little bit. I know we spoke yesterday. Um, Wendy and I are both moms. She's got kids a little bit older, but um, what has it been like with having having your brood come back and and be with you? Um, <laughs> it's been good, <laughs> but you know, um, it's I'm used to painting alone with everybody out doing their thing. So now having everybody here. Um, it's it's really nice it's a little distracting for you know me getting into my groove but um but it's nice you know it's it's nice everyone's uh doing their thing and it's a little bit more open here than some other parts of the country so um you know we've been out and about a little bit more than everybody else and so you have a little bit more room so you guys probably can go on walks and do a little bit more outdoor yeah. activities <laughs> Yes, exactly. Bike riding, you know, go to the beach, um, you know, a lot of outdoor sort of stuff. I spent a lot of time outside um, the last few weeks. So, so it's good. It's good. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm glad to hear that, you know, you guys are, are actually having a, a good moment in all of this. I know like for me, I'm urban. So, you know, it may, it's a little tougher 
um, for my daughter to go out and spend yeah. time with friends because it's we're a little bit more confined. Yeah. So share a little bit, Wendy, about how you became such an incredible artist. Like, you know, how did, what was your journey like? Well, thank you. Um, well, I started off, um, I went to school for design, actually. I was in graphic design and did some art directing when I lived in New York City. Um, and, you know, I always had a passion for the fine arts, drawing. I always drew. I always painted. But I don't know. I just, you know, in the back of my mind, you're a starving artist. Ah, uh, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so I, went the, I went for the, you know, more corporate thing. And, um that was not, I mean, it was great, but not the same kind of creative freedom you can have being a painter. I mean, it's a whole, opened up a whole new world. Once I had um, my kids, I have three kids. Um, I, you know, did some freelance from home and then I decided I don't want to go back to the corporate world. I don't want to do that. I am just going to paint. So I started painting seriously every day, like, you know, I had been doing it, you know, my whole life. And just said, this is my job now. I'm putting this hat on. Another artist told me, take it seriously. Get up every day, do it. And it'll actually turn into something if you really work hard. So Great advice. Yeah, I've been doing that like the last, I don't know, 12 years. And um, it's really, it's it was good advice. I give it to any other artist starting out, you know. Well, and that's really what it takes. I mean, yeah. it, it, with art, it's definitely a, a discipline. And yeah. if you're not willing to pay the price to do that, you yeah. don't get to see that, you know, evolution of, wow, here's where I started and now look what I'm doing. Exactly. And it's, it's kind of an obsession, really. I mean, you sleep, eat, think, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, it's really all you think about, honestly, if that's, I mean, at least I do. It, it's, it's what I think about most of the time. So, um, so it's, it's great. I love it. I mean, I couldn't, couldn't love it more. I'm so glad I took that chance. And, and well, I'm, I know all your collectors are so glad that you did too. And I know a lot of the galleries that have your artwork. I know we had it for a while. We should probably bring more of it back in. We kind of lost touch since we made that move a couple yeah. years ago. But um, so your subject matter, um, when we carried your work, you were doing a lot of florals. And yeah. I know since then, because I follow you, you've mm -hmm you've kind of delved into some other subject matter. Um, what did you start with? And then how did you migrate into what you're doing now? I think, I, I well, I think kind of right from the get-go, I've been very diverse. I like to paint a lot of subjects. <laughs> so um, always trying to narrow it down was a harder thing for me because I, you know, I love it all. Um, so I started out, probably painting, um, you know, I took some workshops. I'm really self-taught painter, but I took a few workshops here and there and studied techniques and did some more realistic type paintings, which are really fun to do. Um, but my passion is more texture, palette knife, color. Um, so, and, and coastal, not all right. things, coastal, but I do love to incorporate the coast into a lot of my pieces, probably because I grew up around the coast. Um, so, you know, lately I'm doing still a lot. I have a large diverse body of work. I'm doing a lot of, um, I have a new palm tree series. I have, um, I'm still doing a lot of florals. Um, I do seascapes. So, um, and you did some incredible city scenes for a while. I don't know if you're still yeah. continuing with those, but I those urban was amazing lately, but, but I, I've gone, you know, Probably not so many city scenes lately, but um, it doesn't mean I can't revisit that. <laughs> right. Well, show us a little bit of what you're doing now. And then I'd like okay. for you to share a little bit about, you know, your approach as far as your technique of, you know, how do you, how do you start a painting and then how does it build that okay. type of thing? Okay. I'm going to flip. Okay, and I'm going to minimize my screen here so we can okay, see. Okay, so your... these are some things in my studio. I, I've put up a little more just so you could get a good look. So I'm doing, um, this is just some coastal marshes. I have, uh, we have a lot of marshland around us. And um, this is one of my palm tree series. This one was inspired by the West Coast. 
That is so beautiful, Wendy, and the sky is incredible. Yeah, that's California inspired. <laughs> and um, let's come over here. These are some of my florals. This one actually is a commission that I finished. That's going to be going to a new home soon. Um, it's a butterfly garden. So I've been kind of exploring these a little bit, making my florals a little bit more interesting with, you know, adding the element of the butterflies to it and really brightening up my colors. And I'll get real close to the texture. I don't know if oh, you can tell. It's very, very textured. And of course, these little guys, I do, I do have a lot of followers that like my roosters. Um, and this is one of my favorite ones over here too. This one I, I did have for sale, but now I have it in my own collection. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, I see that happens sometimes, that you know, when you just happen. like, oh my gosh, I, that's one of my children that I have to keep. Oh, and that one, oh, that, yeah, that I was, you know, as I say, I like to paint everything and then I'll, I'll bring you out here. I put a few out here so you could see some more of my palm trees. It's hard to see. It's a little dark, um, up here and some more sunflowers. And of course I do, these aren't um, palms, but these are birch trees. It's, it's a little hard to see. Wendy, your work is just so incredible. And from Thank even you. from two years ago, That's I just good. see I, that you, you know, you've kind of taken it to the next level. Yeah, I think I've, I'm just always, I guess that's good for now. I'm always trying to push myself to evolve and um, better myself as an artist. I feel like once I am doing something any length of time, you, I just always want to, there's always room for improvement. I think, you know, what can I, what can I do to, you know, just make this more interesting. So um, lately I've been using a lot of texture more than when I first met you, I think. Right. I the palette knife a little bit. Now I'm probably using it for 80, 90% of my paintings. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you share with the viewer? So a lot of times I like to let people understand, try to get kind of into the mind of the artist. When you're going to execute a painting, you've got your blank canvas up there. And like you said, you're constantly thinking 24 hours, absorbing ideas. Mm. When you go to approach that canvas, What's the first step that goes into that? Are you sketching it out with a, um, yeah. you know, how, what is the process? How do you work oh through your, your actual creativity? Usually I'll sketch out little, um, I just, I mean, this is so small, but you call them little thumbnail sketches, little, you know, small, little, tiny little ideas I'll have sketched out just for composition. Okay. And often I'll have multiple pictures that I'll work from. I don't always like to just take a picture and copy it. I like to, you know, if I'm at the beach one day, I might have 10 pictures. And if I'm going to do some sea grass, um, I'll use maybe three or four of them and incorporate okay. kind of my own version of the, the, the seascape. Um, uh, you know, I'll kind of design the painting around using the my memory from when I was there and using the photographs. So okay. I'll do that. I'll sketch it out. I'll get my little sketches. Not always. Sometimes I just start sketching on a blank canvas. And then um, I like to stain my canvas, usually with a, like a nice uh, orangey under color, um, base color. Okay. Then I sketch it out usually with some uh just a paintbrush and uh loosely sketch out with some you know whatever colors whatever colors right. you know, purple or an orange or something i sketch it out and then um then i just go i start um kind of blocking in my darks just building the painting and um just letting it unfold really i i I'm not a huge planner. I know some artists have their paintings really planned in their head and they can envision the whole thing finished. I kind of sort, you know, I have a, a kind of a vision of what I want, but I, I let it sometimes unfold and sometimes into something a little different than I was originally thinking of. And that's the fun of it. I mean, that. Yes, I love that. 
Yeah. You know, and I think then then you're almost um, having a dialogue within this. You're almost your subconscious mind of okay, where is this going? Exactly. And sometimes you know when you let your mind just go and kind of like when you're meditating, it you end up with your best paintings. When you think about it too, at least me, when I start to think about it too much and looking at other resources too much, I mean, you know, we all like to look at our favorite painters and who influences us. But I think that when you start doing that too much, it takes away from your own voice. You know, you're better to just be inspired, get in the zone, paint, and then you end up with something a little bit more of your own flavor is kind of what I like. You know, those are my best paintings, I think, when I do that. Well, one of the things that I really love about your work is that one, it's um, very classical. So it's timeless. It's something that, um, you know, someone can collect and it will transcend all of time because it doesn't get forever. You know, it's something that is going to be, you know, whether you are 100 years from now or 100 years in the past, it's something yeah. we can all appreciate because you're extracting from nature, mm -hmm. which I really love about your work. When was there any ideas of that subject matter that you wanted to capture? Like, how do you feel about it when you're painting your work? Um, how do I feel about about the subjects, you know, because you, I can see that even though it's diverse, yeah. Um, other than the cityscapes, most of your subjects are very classical and they're really extracted by nature. Yeah. Kind I of like Monet. Yeah, nature really, it, it's just inspiring to me. Every time I drive down the street, I walk down, you know, take my dog out. You're, I mean, I am watching, I've heard, um, you know, plenty of artists say this, but I'm watching where the light hits the leaves on the tree or how the grass is lit up and how I can take that and and make that feeling in my painting. I try to almost make it not so much like, you know, not photo, I, I, I appreciate photographically real paintings, but I want to almost give it like a lot, you know, life to it. Like, um, feel like you can kind of step into it. And yeah. um, that's kind of what I'm trying to do in each piece, just sort of bring that moment alive when you were there, you know, or thinking about it. Cause some of the places are, or partly my imagination, partly the pictures that I'm looking at, or, you know, the sketches that I drew when I was there. Well, I think that you'd mentioned, you know, meditation. And I think that is one of the things in your work that, um, you know, it's almost like you capture this moment. And sometimes we're so busy in life, yeah. we don't really stop to reflect on nature. And we see it and we appreciate it but it's yeah. fleeting. We're walking. We don't really stop at, you know, like that old saying, oh. stop and smell the roses. Exactly. We don't really do that. But with your work, you've done that for us. You've captured these moments with these florals, with the lighting on there. And I know just sitting back and looking at a painting like yours or when we had them, mm -hmm. you, it slows you down and you really become more meditative and in the moment with your work, which is mm -hmm. just incredible. One of the reasons I like it. Beauty to all my work. Thank you. I mean, yeah. that's all because, well, especially now, there it just seems like there's so much chaos around us. And, you know, and I've had, you know, when you have a family, you have your own, um, you know, ups and downs that you have to go through. And sure. I think that just, it's almost meditative when I'm painting, when I'm in the zone, and um, I get it out. And, you know, hopefully it makes people feel happy and um, at peace when they look at them and, you know, interested where they want to keep looking. And um, like you said, the, what I think is good is that they can, they can go they, anywhere, really, in a traditional house, a contemporary house, because, it, it, you know, I try to keep it, I think maybe it's because it is organic and, you know, nature inspired. You can kind of right, and it's also because of your color palette. I mean, it yeah. is traditional in the sense that you know you're definitely building on mm -hmm. the masters that came before yeah. being here in this time. But you've taken it really in another direction that you've brought in some very contemporary bold colors. So you're right; it can work anywhere. Yeah. So one of the things I was going to ask you is. 
um, with the COVID, I, you were just like taking off. I mean, I saw you in this gallery and I know a lot of the gallery owners. So I was like, good for you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're really making um, an impact in getting into all these galleries. Now that there's been the shutdown, how's that affected your show schedule and the things that you had been doing? Um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Obviously, you know, thankfully, you know, I've still had sales with collectors and actually even some galleries, um, even with their doors closed, but um, kind of just hoping things will pick up and um, we'll see when everybody starts opening their doors. Uh, right. what's gonna be, we're going to want to get out there and go to the galleries and not stop you know, doing what they love and, you know, appreciating art because art makes you feel good. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll, you know, pick up right where we left off and um, I'll keep getting out there as much as I can. It might even be more because people yeah. may just say, well, maybe I'm not going to go on a cruise ship anytime soon. And yes. maybe I'm going to avoid flying if I have to. And, you know, take in my surroundings, my home where I live, you know, every, I think for me, it made me recognize that, you know, I had never spent, what was it, eight weeks at home. Exactly. And it made me really appreciate the artwork that I've, I've collected because it was a bit of like my own solace in the midst of being on lockdown. I was surrounded by these beautiful things and it really did. I have a completely different appreciation or a greater appreciation than I ever have about art and not just art, but just creating a home environment that you feel mm -hmm. like it's your sanctuary. It's so important. It is. It is. So, um, yes, hopefully other people will do the same. I, you know, I, I don't think it's changed things too much. We'll see when everybody opens up though. We'll see. Well, my last question for you, and I know, you know, this may, maybe you haven't really given a lot of thought about this, but what would you like, you know, a hundred years from now when we're not here and you have this legacy that you've been creating these paintings that are going to be here forever. What do you ever think and reflect, like, how would you like people to perceive of your time period on this planet creating as an artist? Gosh, I, I don't think I've, I haven't really thought about that much because I'm always just in the moment, you know, working on the next painting. But I think kind of maybe what you said, hopefully um, my art will be timeless and we'll be able to, you know, people will want to hang it for years and years and years and not tire of it because, um, you know, I liked, I liked what you said, timeless. Yeah, I think that that would be the one thing that I would say. And Man, I could just sit there in front of those palm trees. Mm -hmm. Maybe I am because I am from California. <laughs> it yes. really resonates. I'm like, wow, because I don't think I've seen that series before. But. No, I know. I have them on my website now. And um, I'm probably going to be working on a couple more going forward. I just had to finish up a commission that I was doing. But that's my, my uh, next. I have a couple in the works, so, or not in the works, but in my head. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to get that series out here for sure, because I I know as a Californian, you know, born and raised, lots of people really exactly. gravitate sure. towards exactly. that, so. Exactly, well, look at, if, you know, my website has them all, all of my- uh, Yes, and folks, we put the website here, it's um, on our little ticker there, streaming, so definitely go to Wendy's website check out her work if you if you fall in love with something hmm. she has her galleries listed there on her website as well it, you know you can always reach out to me she i th believe you do commissions i saw one that you had done there for someone yes mm -hmm. so um yes and i have instagram which is wendy norton low underscore fine art okay try to post on there um I should be posting more. A lot of these newer pieces that I have out, I haven't yet photographed. Um, I've just kind of been stockpiling them during this. You know, well, blend. social media is like a second job. <laughs> I, I know. It is, so, it is a whole other job. So I need to get to that. And some of these, I probably have 10 paintings that I haven't posted yet. But, but most of my work is there. And like you said, it's all broken down into where you can find them and um, phone numbers and everything like that. So Okay. 
Well, Wendy, you are a blessing to the world and your work is just incredible and so positive. You know, when you look at it, it does nothing but just bring your spirits up because of the beauty and because it's nature and it's really, you know, points us in the right direction of mm -hmm. what this, what we're really here for is to nourish ourselves, nourish the planet. So um, thank you so much for being oh, on the show. For having me. And I can't wait to have those palm trees in the gallery. So don't forget us. Some more. We'll keep in touch and I'll, and I'll get some out there. All right, Wendy. All right. Blessings to your family. And I hope to see you soon. You too. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Wendy is such a sweetheart, you guys. I spent um, a whole day with her. I, I brought uh, Michael Floor to a, a gallery and she was showing in that gallery and that's how we got a chance to meet. And just not only is there a reflection of who she is through her work, but she's growing and growing as an artist. And I think that's something that's really great is if you start collecting an artist that I would say, you know, is what I call mid tier, meaning that they're just, they're starting to get their presence in galleries. And then you get an opportunity to collect and then be a patron of that artist. It's so great with that support that you bring to see what they're capable of because they will, you'll see, you know, they start one place and then five years from then you're like, wow, you, your work is you know, just getting better and better and then 10 years. And I've even seen that in Michael Flores' work. Um, you know, just artists continue with the support of patrons to push their art forward and it's so important. And this next artist I'm gonna bring on is a great artist. I've worked with him on a couple of um, commercial jobs, meaning like hotel jobs, because that's something I also get hired sometimes to be a curator for big um, commercial jobs. And he is a metal artist here from San Diego, does some of the most beautiful metal works that I've seen, um, big installation pieces, mobiles, all kinds of things. Um, his name is Mike Dunn, and I'm gonna bring him on the show. And we're gonna do our very best to show how he works in metal. It might get a little loud, so if it does, you know, you might wanna mute your sound a little bit, but Mike's a sweetheart, and let me see if I can get him on the show here. Hey, Mike. Welcome Hi. to the show. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. We we can hear you got some machine work going on in the background there. Yeah, there's a blacksmith class happening right now, so the power <laughs> hammer is being used, and it's, as you can hear right there, it's a very loud tool. So yeah, it's hopefully... okay. We can, we can hear you, and that's all that matters. So, Mike, Great. um. You know, share a little bit about your background with the folks that are watching. So, you know, we haven't had too many um, metal artists on, and it is such an incredible art form. But how did you get involved with it? Um, I kind of fell into it, to be honest. Uh, I um, was brought on as an apprentice for a welder, and I was just doing real boring uh, pipe work and railings and you know, just awful, monotonous construction work. And I really started to branch off on my own after hours and started with the basics, you know, uh, making a rose for somebody's wedding. Uh, I just really fell in love with making something look fragile out of something so unfragile. And, uh, you know, moving it into ways it shouldn't look like it's a ghost. That's a really I, interesting take on it, too, because you're right. Metal is not fragile, but when the way that you work with it, it surely does become that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, as you know, feathers are probably my most used uh, piece of art and most requested. And making something look like it's moving, like a thin little feather out of heavy metal is really what I'm trying to go after. So how long have you been working as an artist in metal? Um, my mother would say I've been an artist since I was a kid, but uh, then I, you know, I used to draw everywhere on things that I couldn't draw on. And then uh, I started playing sports and just dropped art altogether. But I picked it back up when I was the uh, apprentice, and that was eight years ago. Okay. That's awesome. But, and it is now, it, I quit doing railings and other such things, and it's now my full-time job. 
That's it's just wonderful. Metal art. Well, exactly. you know, I it's think that's, that is, you know, and also, you know, your devotion to it that I know that's not something that you just flip the switch on to be able to provide a living for you and your family yeah. and then, you know, devote your entire life to art. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it, you know, it's nice to know two days are the same, but it's also a scary thing. You know, everybody needs railings all the time. It's a little harder to convince people that they need a, a giant octopus table or something <laughs> like that. But uh, it's, I, I, I get up and I'm excited to go make what's in my head today. Well, and it, you know, it pays off in, in other dividends because it's something that not only will you enjoy it, we'll enjoy it, but the entire world will enjoy it forever if it's, yeah. if it's well done. So let's yeah. see what you're working on. Okay. Um, so currently, sorry, I'll try and make this. And I'm going to minimize positive. my screen here. Okay. Um, let me rotate around here. So this is uh, the octopus table. Um, it is going to be a glass tabletop. And it has obviously the eight arms. Uh, can you see it okay there? Yes, my gosh, I'm just taking it in. It's amazing. And so uh, there'll be cracked glass on top. And this arm here is going to puncture through that glass and the cracks are going to radiate down to the end. And it'll be uh, 72 inches by 48 inches. What a masterpiece. And how did you come up with that concept? Um, I made octopus door handles for a, um, a sushi restaurant in Rancho Santa Fe. And uh, I, they challenged me to make an octopus. And actually, this was the piece they gave me. This, uh, let me get out of this little rubber thing they found they said they want me to make something like that and i've just kept that on my desk ever since and uh it it was i fell in love with the process of make getting these incredible bends and organic bends out of metal and then none of these have or so these ones have suckers on them uh can you see those yes so the rest of them will have that i just need to be content with the shape they're in before i put those on no, that's wonderful. Can you do me a favor and bring the camera just right really close to the, um, the tentacle, you know, the yeah. arms, so that people can see the detail there? Yeah, so this one has suckers all the way up it. Wow. And, and that's then, all hand done in metal. What is the process that you use to create all of that detail. Um, I just got done forging right now. It's a very hot, sweaty process. But uh, actually, here's one I can show you. This was some test suckers that I did there. So you can see. I was trying to figure out which one, how to make the dimples best. So I just made a little test piece. But um, I, there's gigantic power hammers, the tools you can hear running in the background. And they're uh, 50 tons. And we use those to taper down the metal. So it starts it starts here at a three and a half inch stock, solid stock. And I taper all that down. And then I add a pipe. You can see here's hollow pipe. I use uh, I cut a V in that to taper the bottoms because if I did that out of solid stock, it would just be ungodly heavy. So from here to here. So on this point to this point is hollow pipe, and then that's solid. And this is just a lot of hammering, heating and hammering. So you're using, like, the old blacksmith technique of just going after it. Yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, I would say I have at least 100 hammers, and it's all to make different shapes, and they all have their own purposes. And I... Did we lose you? I think we lost it. Where it goes. Okay, back. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'll, sometimes I'll draw out on a table. I'll draw with chalk the shapes I want, but more often than not, uh, I just hit it and see which way it goes and just kind of follow that. I, I don't plan them out as much as I should, but it gives me really organic outcomes. Well, we're going to definitely have to show that table off once we finish it. I, I can't wait to see what the final looks like on that. Yeah. That looks like 
a really lot of work. Yeah, yeah, you and me both. Uh, uh, if it comes out the way it's in my head, it's going to be something pretty neat. Uh, now, do you question. have do you happen to have the, one of the headdresses that you yep. do? Yeah, I brought out. Um, so the headdress and the original wings I made, I'll never get rid of because I made the, the headdress was for an art competition, and that competition meant a lot to me. So I kept the headdress. I got second, by the way, so wasn't sure Excellent. about that. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy who won was a friend of mine, so that's okay. And then the wings uh, piece because uh, my mother helped me build those a uh, few years ago. So uh, this is the headdress. Um, oh, I think look I told at you. That, oh, wow, that's incredible. That's all out of metal. Yeah, I told you on the phone, uh, I think that uh, it got dropped, so. So a couple pieces, are, it's in the process of being repaired right now, but like this piece here came off, so I'm fixing that. But yeah, these are all um, brass, copper, uh, stainless steel, mild steel, and uh, I thought there was zinc, but maybe not. Oh yeah, uh, stainless with, um, with a heat coating. So this is every type of patina that I knew how to do and I just made as many feathers as I could and put That's them all on incredible. there. So you, you did each feather and yeah. then each feather is out of different materials True. and then you're putting patina and are you doing a hot patina then with acids and then with a blowtorch? A lot of different patinas. Um, okay. This one was done, the stainless steel one here, that was done with just a torch. I put the torch end on it, and you can see the little burns on it. Um, these beautiful blues are from a vapor patina, where I leave the copper in an um, airtight bag with um, ammonium overnight, and it creates, an, oh, uh, and I put a, a, a buffer, a, um, a barrier in the middle. But it, it leaves some really pretty blues. I think that's probably my favorite patina. Oh, and then on, okay. this is what it looks like on brass. It gives a little more of a greenish blue on grass. That is truly a masterpiece there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just in your imagination is really incredible that you have, you know, your, your mind works in such a way that you know how to take this really difficult medium that, I mean, I've only really met a handful of metal artists that were really talented the way that you are to come up with ideas of using metal to craft these sculptural pieces, which is what they really are. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, there's definitely some metal artists out there that are uh, way beyond my abilities, but um, locally, I, I don't see a whole lot of people doing what I'm doing. Um, and, and there's a small forum of us uh, metal artists, and, and we all stay in touch, even though none of us are close, but um, it, it's just a passion. I don't, uh, woodworking never really spoke to me. Uh, I like being crafty and just hitting a hammer and I enjoy welding too. It's not the healthiest thing, but I enjoy it. <laughs> it's, True. it's just, it reached out and grabbed me and I haven't looked back since. Can we, do you have anything you can show us? Give us an idea of how you actually make something. Sure. So let me show you the wings and then I'll show you how, and the same process for the headdress, but. Um, okay. there's the original wings I made that, that you've seen before and the, the idea was that it's an old airplane, old riveted airplane and nature is busting out of it the piece is called Overcome so the idea was that there's an actual organic uh, bird feather underneath the airplane and so uh, I, to make this I had to learn how to make a lot of feathers so I can show you guys the process of making a feather or two um yeah. That would be great. And I love your wings. I I didn't get a chance to tell the folks about that, but that was when I first met Mike, that was one of the pieces that we were looking at for an installation for a hotel. And so that's still something that may happen because with the COVID thing, things didn't get finalized. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's a piece that is very uh, meaningful to me. So, uh, I, I like, I've made a couple of them now, but the idea you had of making it more military for that particular venue, I really like the idea of a military green 
with some of the, um, the painting of the, the aircraft numbers and such things. I, I think that'd be a great piece to make. So uh, let me go over the feather. So I have pre-cut a bunch of feathers. This one's copper. Um, I have a, we have a big water jet over here. Uh, so this is a huge shop, so I'm just going to play part of it. But, uh, over there is a big 10 foot by five foot water jet and it'll cut six inches of material. So this copper is kind of a breeze for it. But um, I cut, I pre-cut all of these and then I drew a line down the middle. I usually use a B roller, but uh, that's not at this venue. So I'm going to show you a different way to do it to create this inside seam. Okay. Uh, can you see this piece or do I need to pull it closer? Um, we can see it, but if you bring it a little closer, probably better. Okay. I seem to put this on something so heavy. Uh, so here's a piece. It's called a sinusoidal. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but... Okay, we can see it now. Uh, this piece right here. So I'm going to use these grooves with a hammer that has the, the opposite of that, just to make the seam down the middle. So I'm going to follow this line just with uh, light flows because it's copper. Can you see that okay? Yes. And so it's just giving it a mild bend, nothing too strong there. And then I actually fold it over. So because uh, it's copper, I can do it with, and I've already annealed this piece. I should have mentioned that. I've annealed it with heat, so it moves much better. Copper okay. can stay annealed for a long time. So now I have it bent almost all the way in half. And then I just lightly take the other end of the hammer and let me move it to the anvil. Sorry. There we go. So now I'm going to take the other end of the hammer and just lightly hit that seam. This is called fold forming. What is uh, it called again? Fold forming. Okay. People do it in jewelry quite a bit. Um, if I was to get a uh, cross peen, which is a rounder piece than this, and I did it on this round part of the anvil, the horn, it would continue to curve this piece. So you see a lot of people make jewelry like that. You know, it'll turn into like figure eight. But I just do it for this seam. So uh, all I'm doing is just smashing that seam down a little bit, and then I open them back up. And you do this on every single feather to make these just perfect the way that you want them. Yes, and uh, many people have asked me why I don't use a stamp, especially in a shop like this where we have the capability of having a um, CNC stamp, and I could just stamp out all the feathers. And I will... I think we're losing your sound again. I think we lost your audio. Uh-oh, okay. Not our first rodeo here, folks. Sometimes we lose people, but I think he's going to come back. Okay, he's back. Let's bring him back up. Oh, that's okay. You know, here we are. That's okay. Okay, okay so uh, I have opened it up, but not quite as much as I want, so I'm just going to hit it a little bit with a hammer to flatten out the outside but not hitting the center because I want to keep that nice seam. So now it's flattened out. <laughs> it's flattened out now. Okay. Okay, and so now I'm going to use that sharp part of the hammer that I was talking about earlier, and I'm just going to run it along here. Um, this is the tedious part of the feather because uh, you can see how many strikes that takes for each wow. feather. Um I'm working on building a machine that does this faster, but it, it, I don't have it finished yet. It could be a while. So I'm just doing it at a slight angle um, because I think straight doesn't look organic. So 
So I'm sure that if I kept going, it'd be pretty boring. But uh, that looks can, like a pretty serious workout, too. Yeah, yeah, especially out in the forge where it's real hot and, and miserable. Uh, we're inside the shop right now. But so you can see, I just do a light strikes and then and then run it up each side until it looks like this. And then that would be the front. And then the back doesn't look great because it got beat up by the anvil. But you just keep going. Uh, it's probably, wow, that's incredible, Mike. I didn't idea. realize how much goes into just making one feather. So when you do, you know, those headdresses or even you're doing the wings, that's yeah. an incredible amount of work. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, how uh, much time do you think you have in, you know, for instance, that that headdress that you created? The, the headdress was a uh, time crunch because I got asked to be in the art show very last minute. I only had three weeks to make that whole thing. And from coming up with the idea to making it, uh, it was it was full full twelve hour days for quite a while. Um, but the I've got the feather making process down because I've made thousands at this point. Uh, right. But I would say you know I could do the headdress again uh, probably in two full weeks. But that's because I've had a blueprint. Um, right, that's up. because you perfected the ability to make those feathers now. Yeah, yeah. The wings take uh, substantially longer because the, all the rivets that go into that, um, it's actually almost as tedious as the uh, feathers. Each one of each one of these pop rivets right. takes quite a bit of time. So this new octopus cable that you're doing, that's kind of pushing the envelope once again then. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, it's not a commissioned piece, and everybody thinks I'm a little crazy. Um, and I just so I recently had access to these large power hammers, and I've always wanted to make an octopus table. I've seen a couple out there; they looked a little Disney to me and a little funky. Right. Um, so it's just something that's been in my head for quite some time, and I. I love it. I just want to the fact that you're just doing it because you want to do it. I mean, that to me is really speaks of the true artist. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, I don't think I have a choice. I think uh, it's just going to come out of me. So I, mm -hmm. uh, it's either going to nag at me or I'm going to do it. So, I so Mike, to do it. if somebody has an idea, they you know they want a metal piece or they want something that maybe is. Um, you know, a combination of art form or like what you have there. It has a little bit of a purpose, like a table or, uh -huh. you know, some lighting piece that they want to have as an art form. Are you willing to kind of work with someone on the creative on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, pretty much. I, I, when I said I'm not doing railings or any of that anymore, I, I am not. But Metal Done Right, my company is. I okay. just have people that do that for me now. Um, so uh, if it's a project I find exciting, I just did a restaurant um, right before COVID happened. It's um, downtown on 5th and J. Okay. And it's a, it's a very large restaurant. It's a four-story place. And they wanted these really pretty art panels, and they wanted um, plasma cut art out of it. And they, they left it up to me to design how to do it. So I, you know, within reason, I went back and forth with them quite a bit, but um, it, it faded. Um, I, I wish I had a picture to show you, but... What's, what's the name of the restaurant? Huntress. Okay. And then Lumi is the top floor. Lumi is a uh, uh, Michelin star chef that people are very excited about. But Yeah, I think I read an article about that. Now, did you do both the upstairs and downstairs? Uh, I only did downstairs. Okay. Technically, it's I did two stories. Um, okay, got it. I, I, there's a pretty good probability I'm going to be doing work for Lumi. Um, it, we're just going back and forth on that. But the Huntress part is completely done. Lumi so still, as uh, soon as we're able to go in, I, I find it a little weird to go eat at a restaurant if I'm going to have to wear a mask. Yeah. So right. I don't know how that, you know, they're navigating that yet, but I'm definitely going to put that on my hit list because Great. I'm a yeah. little foodie. Well, you let me know. I'll meet you there. The owners are good friends of mine. And I'd be okay. happy to go there with you. It's a deal. So 
if people want to follow you, I know that you have um, an Instagram metal done D U N N. Correct. And is it R I G H T? Okay. And I think uh -huh. we have it streaming here. If not, we'll put it up on the screen. And then as far as, um, you know, meeting with you for commissions, if you folks have interest, you can call me, you can call uh, Mike. He's got probably his listing there. But this is one of those rare opportunities to have an artist create something specific for you with your ideas. And then you almost get to have a collaboration between things that you think could be really cool and metal. And then someone who is equally talented in this realm of metal like nobody else I've seen before. So this, if, you, if you're thinking of something, now's a good time to reach out on that one. I appreciate those kind words. Wow, Mike, you, you deserve that. And um, I'm really looking forward to working with you on future projects. And I'm also looking forward to getting your artwork into our gallery. So I know we've gone back and forth and then we had COVID and now yeah. we don't. So now's a good time. Yeah, uh, I'm building up. Um, the problem was I, I didn't have much of a uh, reserve because uh, a lot of stuff I made was commission. But now that I'm doing right. this full time, I'm not uh, focused on commission. Uh, I figure I, I'm still doing commission, like I said, but um, I, I have a good, I've probably seven or eight pieces. Uh, obviously, this one, I, I don't know how mobile it will be because it's going to be very, very heavy. But. Um, yeah, I, I would love to, to work with you and, and see if, uh, if I can fill up a corner. Okay, let's do it. Let's make a plan. One last question for you. This is off the art subject, but you know, I can't help but notice you're, you know, you're a strong guy there. How do yeah. you make out when you go to the county fair and you have to whack that, that uh -oh. hammer thing and have it go up? That's the only thing I do well at the fair. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't, you know, the things with the rings and the balls and the and the guns with the water. I don't, I don't win any of that. It's quite embarrassing when I take a date. But I know when I go to the the hammer thing, I know that I, I'm going to do pretty well there. Yeah, that's what I would really expect too. Yeah. Well, thanks yeah. for being on the show. That was so awesome watching you. I mean, I have a completely different respect for those feathers now, for sure. So thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, together soon and get yeah. you in the gallery and once we start getting things opening up right now we're just noon to five but you know yeah. when people start walking back out on the street i want to bring in some new artists and you're definitely one of those that i've been thinking about so let's do that thank you at the very okay. least i don't forget i have a feather bracelet since even since oh, the last time that's waiting right. for you. Okay. so next time i see you i'll bring it sounds good i appreciate it okay. thanks okay. for having me on you, Mike, your family, your crew there. You guys be well, and I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. I appreciate okay. you taking the time. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, that's today's show, folks. Wednesday, Art of the City. You know, my takeaway from going to Florida, meeting with Wendy, and then meeting with Mike, and all these artists that we've had on the show is that you get to see that artists come in all different walks of life. You have moms, you have people who came from different backgrounds that they've got this innate thing within them that they have to create. They have to bring this beauty out into the world. And we as art appreciators, we are the recipients of it. And beyond that, the, the entire world will be. So when you know, you're thinking about the next piece of art you're collecting, or I know a lot of you are collectors, you're watching, I think it's something really great to think about the fact that there's so much that goes into the behind the scenes of creating a piece of art. And that's what makes it the most special and the rarest commodity, if you will, to the world because it's one person with one passion, with the ability to express themselves in a very unique way. And that energy goes onto the canvas or into a metal piece or sculpture or ceramic or whatever it might be in a unique way that nobody else could do. So it's truly why they call art 
many times a priceless piece of art because there's no way to replicate it. It's not made by machine, it's not mass produced. It's something that only one person can actually create. So that's why I have such a passion for it. That's why I want to bring you folks, the best artists in the world on Art of the City. So please share this with your friends. You can tell I'm very passionate about it. Um, you know, we are going to keep the live streaming. We may shift it. I've had a couple people express that now that people have to go back to work or want to go back to work, that um, they'd love to see the show, but they'd love to continue to see it live. And maybe that's going to be something that has to be done in the evening. So we'll keep you posted on that. But until then, on Friday, we have Dennis Matheson coming in from Hawaii. And next week, we have another lineup of artists that I will announce on Friday. Don't miss the sale, folks, because there are so many pieces of art when we're going through it. I'm like, oh, no, I want to keep that. Oh, no, I want to keep that. Unfortunately, I don't have the room to keep it all. And I could easily become an art hoarder, but I want to allow you folks to enjoy it because it really isn't doing anybody any good sitting in a warehouse so um, that's why I've got I've to gotta let these things go. So have a great rest of the week. I'll see you Friday right here, 1 p.m., live streaming Art of the City. And make sure you share this with your friends, folks. Have a great day.